Hey guys, so in the last video looking at uh, real-time operating systems, we went over the very basics of setting up a real-time operating system and using that on the Arduino. We really just went over spawning threads and how threads operate independently of each other. In this video, I want to show you guys just a little bit more. We're just going to take a little bit more chunk out of real-time operating systems, and we're going to look at message passing. And so in the last video, we didn't have any functions, any threads that needed to talk to each other. They didn't need to pass any data. One of them, I think, faded an LED, and the other blinked an LED. In this program, we, we're going to have two threads that one of them sends a message to the other one, and that second thread prints that message out to the serial line. Still very simple, pretty pointless program, but it gets the fundamentals of how message passing works. Now, before we really get into it, I, I do want to say that there are multiple ways of handling uh, passing data around. One is through what we're going to look at today, synchronous messages. The second way is through mailboxes. So mailboxes are basically where you can create a mailbox for a thread and other threads can just throw messages, throw mail into that box, but there's no synchronicity. So all the messages just kind of go and collect into that box and the receiving thread can just read them those messages at will. Today, we're going to look at messages that where one thread sends that message and another th and the other thread has to act upon that message before the first, the sending thread, can proceed. Now, there is one other way of handling data passed between functions, between threads, and that's to create just global variables like you would with any other Arduino program. And that there is a time and a place for that, but when you're working with an operating system where threads are jumping between each other, where the operating system is, you know, preempting one thread and, and chopping one thread off and letting another run, if let's say you have a, a counter variable, global data can get mishandled and sometimes you can get corrupted data because one thread might be modifying that data right when the operating system cuts it off and gives time to another thread to run. So that is a, another way of handling data passed between uh, threads, but you do have to be kind of careful with how you do it. And I will talk about that in a future video, but just to let you guys know, if you're starting out, if, you've, if you watched my last video and you've been trying things out, that global variables can definitely start to screw things up uh, if multiple threads need to use that data at once. But moving on, today we're going to look at synchronous messages. So as you can see up at the top, it looks fairly similar to what we had in the last program. I have a bunch of thread working areas, thread 2, 3, and then an HB thread. Now that HB thread is a heartbeat thread. On a real-time operating system like this, a seg fault basically means the whole thing is crashed. And sometimes it can be really hard to tell initially whether your program is crashed or whether there's just sort of a hung loop somewhere. So I have a heartbeat thread here that just pulses an LED on and off kind of in a heartbeat pattern, a boom, 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 boom kind of pattern. And... I know that if that LED stops blinking in that pattern, something has gone wrong and I've probably done something equivalent to a seg fault or buffer overflow or, you know, basically I've crashed the computer. So that's what this third function is here. Now we also have these thread T pointers and these are our pointers that will eventually point to our threads because when we're sending messages back and forth, we're sending that message to a specific thread and one thread needs to know how to reference another thread. So we have these global thread pointers here. And yes, I know I just got done saying that global variables are bad, 
well, in this case, I'm only ever using those as references. I'm not going to be modifying them or changing them or anything like that. So I think I'm okay there. So getting down into it, we have our setup function, our regular Arduino setup function, and that creates, uh, starts the serial line because we're actually going to be printing things out today. And then we run our ch begin, and this setup function here, we create three static threads. Two of them are our message threads, and the third one is our heartbeat. And our thread pointers are being set to the threads that we're creating. So now we have references to both of our message passing threads. And the other thing you'll notice is that my heartbeat thread, I gave it a priority of normal minus one. And that's because this is not a very important thread. And I usually do that to the heartbeat thread. I usually give it a, a lower priority just because as you start making more and more complex programs, you will start to want to prioritize them. Sometimes you have a thread that needs to basically be always running and awaiting input or or doing something. And so you might give that a higher priority. This heartbeat thread, not very important. It's more just an outward indicator to me that things are running okay. So it has a low lower priority. So getting up into our th main two threads, here they are. And so our first thread is, well, not really our first thread, but the, the sending thread is very, very simple. We create a message data called my message. And you can see up here, I have my message data struct. So we create that. And then we just have a while loop that runs forever. And all this while loop does is set the message of the, of my message to hello world, and then give a timestamp to the timestamp field. And I like to do timestamps on basically any kind of message I'm passing around just because it it's not that much overhead. I mean, if you have a million messages, I guess you might take out your time stamping, but it's not that much overhead. And it is really useful to be able to check when a message was sent versus when it was received. And you know, it just, it becomes useful in more complex programs. So then I just package that up. I have that in my, the, my or in the message data struct. And I send that to the thread to pointer, which points to this function, this thread up here. I do apologize that I keep saying functions because I just see thread function. These are threads. They're running in a function, but they're independent threads not being called by each other. So when you send a message, you, you give it a pointer and then you pass whatever your message is as a message type pointer. So I've referenced the my message and I'm casting that as a message T pointer. So I'm going to pass that, or I'm going to send this message here to this thread here. Now at that point, right at this line here, this thread now goes to sleep. It stops running. And this is where the synchronicity of messages comes into play is when you send a message, it puts that thread to sleep until the receiving thread tells it, okay, I'm done. I'm, I'm done with this message now. So that's where the synchronicity versus asynchronous messages come into play is the asynchronous messages, mailboxes, you can just send 30 messages out and the receiving thread can deal with them whenever it wants and the sending thread can continue doing whatever it wants to do. But in this case, we're sending a synchronous message. So this thread now goes to sleep. Even before calling this line here, this thread has now gone to sleep. So coming up to our receiving thread, we create a message data pointer right off the bat. And we create a variable called last time stamp. We're not really going to use it here, but it is useful to keep track, like I said, of when messages were sent and received. So 
this function, this thread, all it does is sits and waits for a message. And this ch message wait also puts this whole thread to sleep until it gets a message. So this, basically this thread is telling this thread to wake up by sending in a message. And then we take our my message for this thread and we read it from ch get message and we pass it the pointer from this thread. So it's now receiving specifically this thread's message. And we give it a receive time. And that just is the same as the timestamp. It's that same little function, get system time. And then we print out our message. We you know print that we've got it. And then we print the message itself out. And then at the bottom here, this last chunk, we have the release. And this is what tells this function. It releases the message and tells this to wake back up. Okay, you can keep running now. So we start with this function here. And it takes some data, packages up, sends it. This goes to sleep. This wakes up reads the message, handles it, and then releases that message, which then wakes this back up to go on doing its thing. And an interesting thing about the release is that it's basically the, the same idea as sending a message. It You give it a, the pointer that you want to release to back to, and then in this case, all I did is I'm just pinging back the exact same message that I got back to this, but you could send back some totally other message. So you could have one thread send a message and then that th the receiving thread can send back maybe a status of how it handled that message. And so that's really useful because the sending thread might need to know exactly what happened. Did, that, did the data that it sent, was that something good, bad, you know, you could basically send back a status of what it did with that message or, or whatever you really want. And then we just give it another last timestamp is equal to the my message timestamp, uh, which was what we, you know, the met the timestamp that we set down here. So this is a very simple, pretty useless program, but it does explain how threads pass data between each other in a synchronous manner. So now we can go and go to our Arduino program and take a look at it running. So I'll upload it. All right, there we go. And we open up serial monitor and we can see message received. Hello world. And it does that every hundred milliseconds because in the sending thread, after it's gotten its release, it sleeps for 100 milliseconds. Again, it goes back to sleep for 100 milliseconds and then starts that process all over. So you can see the hello world is coming from the sending thread. So we've successfully here sent a message from one thread to another and we have communication. So that's about all that I wanted to talk about for this edition of Chibi OS. If you like these videos, Definitely go check out some of the other videos on the channel. If you want to learn more about Chibi OS and real-time operating systems, definitely subscribe to the channel. The past couple weeks I've been on vacation, so my videos have been a bit slower, but I try to put some videos out at least one or two every week. So check back every week and hopefully I'm going to keep putting out more real-time OS videos because I think it's something that a lot of people don't really get exposed to for a really long time and honestly there's it's not that complicated once you have the basics of arduino and programming down real-time os's are pretty easy to work with so anyways thanks for watching i'll see you guys next time